talk a little bit more about this uh, example, but we're going to be focusing on why it is that we end up with that answer and why it is that we knew to make it so that the Jamie character would specialize towards meals and the kids characters would go ahead and specialize towards cleaning rooms. Um, the answer to this ends up being to that uh, concept that I told you we we're going to bump into, which is opportunity cost. I've already given you three definitions of opportunity cost. Uh, one of them was it represents um, all the costs that you should be looking at, not just the uh, financial ones. Um, it, opportunity cost also represents what you would be doing if your current choice is made unavailable to you. But the, what we're going to focus on is the final definition, which is what you have to give up of one good to get one more of another good. So let's go ahead and think about what we're trying to do here. And I'll start you off with just a, a dot right here inside the, um, deep inside the frontier of uh, Jamie's production possibility set. So what we're going to try to do is start here and then just get one more room. And we can do that. We just go ahead and move it over to right. And what you're seeing is, is that in order to start here and move the dot over one unit to the right, in other words, to get another clean room. It doesn't cost you any additional meals. Nothing's going on there. We're in the interior of the set. There is no trade-off that's there anymore. And this is a situation where to get one more room, it does not cost you any meal. Well, let's go ahead and give you a contrasting situation when we're way up here on the frontier. Now, it would be nice if we could just go ahead and move over here to the right just like that and have no opportunity cost of getting uh, one more clean room. But the trick is is that once we try moving off this line, we can't get there. It's not feasible. We don't have the stuff in order to get more clean rooms. So in order to make it so that we get more clean rooms, what we have to do is get rid of some of those meals. What we have to do is just recognize that to get more meals, our rooms, we have to give up some of those meals. So in order to get from here to here, we have to start giving up those meals. And those meals that we give up is the opportunity cost of the rooms. So the idea is, is that the opportunity cost is always expressed in terms of the other good. So let's go ahead and start figuring out what some of these opportunity costs are. Uh, and we'll do this a couple of ways. We'll do it via a little bit of algebra, and we'll do it with a little bit of uh, arithmetic with reasoning. And here's where I get to tell you that these are basically both the same things. A lot of algebra is just simply arithmetic with some logic that surrounds it. So let's start off with the Jamie character. And what I'd like you to do is think about it as you can have this fixed amount of resources that's sitting there. And if you use up all your resources, you can go ahead and produce six meals. Well, I'm going to put an equal sign in there. And an equal sign is supposed to mean that it uses the same amount of resources. So with your resources, with the available technology, you can produce either six meals or you can go ahead and produce four clean rooms. So again, the equal sign in the middle says that this takes the same amount of resources. Six meals takes the same resources as four rooms. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we just find out how many meals we give up when we try to get one more room. And so what we're going to do is just a little bit of algebraic uh, uh, operations in order to make it so that the resources stay the same, but we actually get what we're looking for, which is how many meals it takes in order to get one more room. So what we're going to do is we're going to take both sides of this and just divide by four. We do that, it leaves us with the right hand side just having one room. And over on the left hand side we have six fourths meals. Well, that's just three halves meals. Now one of the things I should point out about me and my exams is that I don't allow calculators because everything that you do on an exam will be stuff that's in fractions, okay? And it'll be some fairly easy to cope with fractions. Um, and so here what we have is the opportunity cost of one room is just going to be one and a half meals. Now we can make some similar calculations for the kids over here. And so what we're going to do is say, well look, um, they can use all, up all their resources and get two meals, or they can use up all their resources and get two rooms. And we'll just go ahead and set up a similar equation just below here. And again, the intent is to depict that equal sign in the middle as meaning same amount of resources. So it takes the same amount of resources to create two meals as it does to create two rooms. 
Now, in order to get rooms all by itself, in order to find out what the opportunity cost of rooms are, just go ahead and divide by two. So what you get is that the opportunity cost of one room is one meal. So now what you have is basically the cost of a room produced by Jamie in terms of meals and the cost of a room produced by the kids in terms of meals. So basically what you can say is which one of these has the lower cost of producing clean rooms. Well, if you look at which one actually end up specializing in our example over here in the production of rooms, it made sense to have the kids specialize in the production of rooms. They were, without trade, um, producing only meals, but when we were specializing and engaging in trade, it found out that if we had them specializing in rooms, we ended up being better off. And the reason why it made sense for them to specialize is that the opportunity cost of them producing a room in terms of meals is lower than for the Jamie character. Now, we can actually reverse this using some of the same numbers in order to come up with the opportunity cost of a meal and not necessarily a room. So let's go ahead and start that just below. Now, what I've done is just duplicated our this uh, production uses the same amount of resource, remember interpretation of equal sign, as this production does. And instead of dividing by four in order to get one room on the right hand side, I'm dividing by six in order to get one meal on the left hand side. So that we know that for the Jamie character, it takes the same amount of resources to produce one meal as it does to produce four six of a room. Remember four six, you can just simplify that down to two thirds. So there you have the opportunity cost of a meal for the Jamie character, and it's going to be in terms of rooms. This is a key feature. Opportunity cost is always expressed in terms of the other good when you're in one of these two good economies. Now we can do something similar for the opportunity cost of producing a room for the kids, but what's funny is, is that it turns out that it's exactly the same. You can just go ahead and slide it down and see that the opportunity cost of a meal is one room for the children. Well now what you get is a totally different story because you look at which one is the low cost producer of meals, which one has the lowest opportunity cost in terms of rooms, and you find it's the Jamie character. Reflect back over here and look at the direction of specialization. Jamie character right here has six meals and uh, specialized wholly in that direction. So what you're seeing is, is that it was best for us to specialize the producer that had the lowest opportunity cost. Now there's another spot on the graph that you can start thinking about opportunity costs. I mean, we've already spotted that uh, inside the production possibility set, the opportunity cost of increasing output is zero. On the frontier, what you can do is you can make these little calculations because you know that you have to give something up to get a little bit more. But we also can define opportunity cost out here in the infeasible zone. And what we usually say is the opportunity cost of getting one more is infinite. That's a nice way of saying that you simply cannot get there. Now, I've promised you that we'd also do this kind of calculation in an algebraic way. In order to do that, what we're going to start off with is a description of this line right here, this production possibility set. In order to help you get your bearings here, I've just wiped out all these calculations that we made over here, and I left us with the opportunity cost of a room in terms of meals sitting up here on the graph. So let's go ahead and start off with this equation of this production possibilities frontier right here. And what we're looking at is a simple line. You see it's got an intercept of 6 and what I've done is said that the meals, which is what we have right up here on this vertical axis, which you usually think of as the y, is equal to 6 when the number of rooms is 0. And then thereafter, any time that you increase the number of rooms, it falls by a little bit. So we have a negative sign here showing that as you increase rooms, the um, <coughs> amount of meals that you can produce falls. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to find out what the slope of this line is. Well, the slope of this line is actually 3 on 2, so it's 6 on 4 all by itself. And so you can see that the uh, equation for this line right here is meals is equal to 6 less 3 halves rooms. Now you should notice a little similarity between that number right there and that number right there. 
What we're describing here is the opportunity cost of the good on the horizontal axis. Well, the opportunity cost of the good on the horizontal axis is just the negative of the slope, the equation that describes the production possibilities frontier. So we have this uh, produc production possibilities frontier as being six less three halves rooms. The opportunity cost of a room is three halves. Easy. You can do something similar right over here. The equation of this production possibility set is um, meals is equal to two less rooms. And I've written it right there for you, but you know that there's an implied one sitting right there. So again, the opportunity cost of a room, the good on the horizontal axis, is just the negative of the slope of that function. Now this should end the screencast on opportunity cost calculations with production possibilities sets.